come back with a tip vlog for you and to make it even better we're making it one of your top requests how to read tenor clef tenor clef is a very exciting development in your cello learning journey and i want to give you all a couple tricks and strategies so you can get it right and be reading fluidly in tenor clef in no time not only are we going to go into tenor clef and talk about how it works but we're also going to look at it in the context of a piece. So if you have a passage in your repertoire that is in tenor clef, I promise you'll be able to start practicing it with all of the strategies in this video. You can definitely learn how to read tenor clef while learning repertoire. That way you are gonna learn things much more quickly and efficiently. So before we get to the tips, please give this video a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe to the Cello Doll YouTube channel so you can support these free cello tips that will help you in your practicing. If you wanna go above and beyond, I am on Patreon where you will get exclusive access to content that will not be available anywhere else. You get to see behind the scenes videos, early access to music videos, and downloadable mp3s lots of fun stuff so be sure to check that out using the link in the description below so before we talk about tenor clef i want to talk quickly about thumb position tenor clef is a very important aid as you start getting above your a harmonic and into thumb position as well as shifting in and out of it if you have not gone over thumb position with your teacher yet I highly recommend starting there before you jump into tenor clef. It's extremely important that you get the proper hand shape and form in thumb position. If you're trying to learn a clef and you're not using proper left hand form, it can lend to a lot of problems that need to be undone down the road. So if you haven't talked to your teacher yet about thumb position, this is a huge disclaimer that you need to before you get into tenor clef repertoire. All right, so tenor clef. First off, let's answer the big question, why? Why do we need to use tenor clef? Well, there is nothing that will sabotage the readability of your music like ledger lines. Now, we have all encountered ledger lines when we have been, for example, up in fourth position reading with bass clef. even higher up the cello, we have to extend the staff and add more ledger lines. And after a while, it's gonna get hard to differentiate. So by adding tenor clef, we are able to stay much closer to the staff and we are able to tell the difference between notes more easily. I promise it's worth the effort because it is gonna make your music much easier to read. And also tenor clef is perfect for the richest register of the cello. What is that range? Well, tenor clef is most commonly used between the C in first position going up to one octave higher. So in using tenor clef, we can avoid a ridiculous amount of ledger lines. So Chelly and I are gonna lay down a couple ground rules that are gonna make our secret formula for learning tenor clef. First, compared to the bass clef, the tenor clef is one perfect fifth higher. Now, if the word fifth sounds familiar to you, that's how our strings are tuned in fifths. So what that means is whatever you see in a tenor clef passage, you can think of it as bass clef, but bumped up one string. Let Chelly and I show you an example with a G major scale. So this is how a G major scale looks in bass clef. If we were to put that in a tenor clef and keep our same finger pattern, it would read the same as a D major scale. of taking material and thinking of it on a different string, we can translate our fingerings up a string, but again, we gotta add some more rules to our formula. 
First off, look at the key signature of your piece. If the piece you are learning has sharps in it, you need to take one of the sharps away. If the piece you're learning has flats in it, you need to add one more flat to your key signature. This is gonna be very important because it is going to allow us to keep the same exact fingering patterns. Now, if you're looking at your piece and you see extra accidentals, even in this exercise, still honor all of the accidentals that you see to get an accurate fingering pattern. There is one exception, one special note that I want you to have to be vigilant for. If you see this note in your tenor clef passages, if we see a natural in front of it, I want you to treat it as a flat. If you see a sharp in front of it, I want you to treat it as a natural. If you see a flat in front of it, I want you to think of it as a double flat. You can even mark them with little tiny accidentals for this exercise if you would like as long as it's not confusing. So this is because we are dealing with the tenor clef pitch of F and are relating it to the bass clef of B and accidentals between these two pitches are treated slightly differently. So keep an eye out for that note when you apply this exercise. Next, you must avoid the A string at all costs. Avoid the A string. Remember how I said tenor clef starts dealing with thumb position? Well, if you are looking at a piece and you think, well, this is easy, I can just go on over to the A string, you're not gonna have the chance to practice those thumb position shifts. They're gonna be very crucial in the final version of the piece. So by avoiding the A string, you're forced to shift up higher. That's good because you'll get to practice your thumb position. Next, we're gonna jump right into these exercises. And the piece we're going to use today, for an example, is the swan, which is a very popular cello piece and is a super common piece for students to get when they are first learning tenor clef. So, the swan is based in the key of E minor with one sharp. Now, if we go back to our formula, our piece is in sharps, so we must take away a sharp from our key signature. And for this exercise, we're gonna be playing with no sharps or flats. So, I'm gonna look at the start of my piece, and I am going to replace it with a bass clef. We are going to read everything in bass clef and follow the finger numbers that you will be using in the final performance version. That's very important. You want to stick true to your fingerings. Otherwise, we're gaining muscle memory that we're not going to need. Let's take the start of this piece and look at it in bass clef. Shelly and I are going to play the first complete phrase for you. and do two bars at a time, that's totally fine too. Make sure you do it so that the muscle memory feels comfortable and consistent. If you go for a shift and you're not exactly quite sure where to go, you're not ready to switch it over to tenor clef quite yet. Jelly and I recommend playing it slowly and really aiming for consistency. So let's start with just two bars. A great way to aim for that consistency as an extra tip is to vocalize what positions you're going to allow as you go through a passage. So I'm starting in fourth. That's an E down here. Now A is in second. 
second again. Now I'm in fourth, and I stay here. Try that vocalization exercise a couple times and do it again when we bring this finger pattern over to the A string and D strings. So we began this section on a fourth finger C. I'm going to hop that on over to a fourth finger on the A string in the same exact spot, which is your G. G in fourth position. So I am in fourth position. I go back. Now I went to second, second again, going up to fourth, and we finish right here. Now let's go on to the last two bars of this phrase. And as you can see, my dolls, it is a scale with a fun little leaf at the top. Looking out for scalar passages is so crucial when you're learning something like tenor clef. Knowing that we're going to be playing adjacent fingers, like we're going up a scale, can be very helpful for you. So look for passages like that in your repertoire. So I'm going to start on my A, first position, and we're going to walk up this scale. So now instead of A, we are going to hop over to our first finger on the pitch E and play the same fingering pattern. Then once you get comfortable with those smaller segments, you can put those two barred groups together and get the entire four bar phrase. to bump your passage up to those higher strings. Don't be afraid to go back to the bass clef model to reinforce any fingering patterns you feel hesitant about. Also, since we are going to be doing more thumb position with this clef, you really want to make sure you're supporting with your left elbow and not drooping because the shoulder of your cello is going to get in the way and you will be consistently flat. Notice I'm not bending and leaving my wrists down because we're still gonna have the same problem or I'm not trying it with all my wrists. Everything's gonna move as a relaxed unit together. So make sure you support with that left elbow as you shift up to those higher positions. Now, if you want some help on specifically the swan with more tips, keep an eye out because Chelly and I are gonna be making a mini lesson vlog on that very soon. And if it's out already, you're gonna see it popping up in that corner for you to easily click on. So my dolls, I hope this video was helpful in learning how to get started with reading tenor clef. If you have any additional questions about tenor clef, Feel free to put it in the comments below and Chelly and I will help out the best that we can. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Again, I am the Cello Doll and you can find me here on YouTube as well as Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Please be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. We have an entire playlist of cello tips, so there are a lot of helpful resources for you on this channel in addition to some fun, spooky music videos that I really enjoy creating. Also, Shelly and I are on Spotify and all other major streaming platforms, so if you want to check out more of our music, it's all available in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching, and Shelly and I will see you soon for a future video. Bye, my dolls!